Hi folks, in this video, we're gonna look at t-shirt transfers for white t-shirts only, and let's see the sort of image quality they can produce. Right, okay then, so if you're going to try to get into the t-shirt printing business, your best color t-shirt to start with is gonna be your white t-shirt. The reason being for that is that white t-shirt transfers are predominantly better than their dark t-shirt counterpart. And what I'm gonna show you now is uh, a t-shirt which we printed uh, a few videos ago, but it's been through the wash about 10 to 12 times now. And I just want to show you how they don't really deteriorate, providing you've got the equipment, the correct equipment, and you're washing them at the correct temperatures. So let me show you this one which we printed and show you how they actually get better with the transfer papers that I use with washing. So let's have a look at one. Right, well, you may recall this T-shirt which I dug out, which I told you was 12 years old, and this was the initial T-shirt which I bought, and this is the one that got me into T-shirt print. Now, I recently found it the other week, as I told you, and when I turned it over, we actually printed on the back of it with one of my, uh, the T-shirt transfers that I actually used. Now, I'm gonna try and hold it close to you, this has been through the wash now, as I say, approximately, say probably 11 or 12 times, something like that. And as you can probably see, it hasn't deteriorated in the slightest. And the thing what, what happens with these transfer papers that I use is that they actually, as you can see, I'll screw it up there, and when I unfold it, it's not a stiff transfer at all. It's actually part of the garment, and that's a great feel that you've got with that, very much like you get when you, you see a screen printed T-shirt. There's no deterioration, there's no peeling, there's no cracking, you can, if I take the garment there, you can probably see, you can stretch it, and there's no cracking or anything, as you can see. And this is a, a t-shirt transfer, which I've used for the past 12 years. I've never veered away from it, and I'm very happy with the results, and so should you be. Now, there are loads of t-shirt transfers on the market, and the thing is, is when you're starting off, you're trying to keep your costs, costs low. There are some very expensive ways to print images on t-shirts, uh, screen printing for one, or buying a direct-to-garment printer, and you're looking at a thousands and thousands of pounds to start up in the t-shirt printing business with this. With this system, which I use, all you need is a decent heat press, your normal home printer, an uh, inkjet printer, and obviously using the same t-shirt transfers as I use. Now, if you get those three things correct, then you're gonna be, be producing the, the same quality as what I'm doing and as I have done for the past 12 years. But if you get one of those things wrong, you get the wrong heat press, for example, your business will fail straight away because you won't be able to apply the t-shirts because you haven't got an even heat, as I've mentioned many a times in my other videos. You need a complete even heat over the t-shirt transfer for it to uh, stick and to actually create the image and embed the image into the actual garment. You need the correct t-shirt transfer because there is a whole myriad of transfers out there. A lot of them are designed just for one or two washes. In other words, you'll see them normally where you iron them on with a, a household iron, and those ones are not the sort of transfer papers that you want to be using if you're gonna be trying to get into the t-shirt printing business and selling because they will only wash out or they fade or crack within a very, very short time. I've got a, a t-shirt which I've done an earlier video on where I've had this and I've had the t-shirt printed for about six years. And this feels good after about 10 to 12 washes at the moment. The one we had before, which I showed in a, in a, a way, way earlier video, was washed obviously probably a hundred times, maybe even more because we had that t-shirt for, for six or so years. And the feel of the t-shirt, which obviously does get softer and softer, and the transfer, and I really zoomed in on it and showed you the, the actual, the, the the close fibers and where you could see that you can't actually see that it was a transfer. They actually sink in, so to speak, to your garment. So that's the benefit of having the right transfer paper. Now, as far as the printers are concerned, I'm forever getting emails of people asking what was the best printer to use. Now, it's not a matter of having the best printer because as I said to you before, any inkjet printer, I predominantly use Epson printers, so I have done for the t-shirt printing, uh, well, I'm using inkjet printer with the inkjet transfers, which I use. And any inkjet printer will do the job. You don't need photo quality. In the early days, 
I had a photo quality and I spent hundreds of pounds on printers thinking that that was the way to go. But you don't necessarily need a photo quality, high resolution printer to do transfers. As you can see from this image, mostly you're dealing with bold colors here. And what I've actually done is on my transfer paper, I've just printed out this image. I just found this image on Google Images and it's a, it's a scenery, it's not my image, I don't own this image at all, it's purely for this demonstration. And the reason why I've chose this image is because you've got some elements there which you probably may or may not want in a t-shirt transfer. You've got some water there with reflections on it, you've got loads of different colours, uh, different shades of different colours as well, you've got a blue sky there. And this was all printed out on a basic inkjet printer. My printer is the Epsom 1500W, which is a European model, but you can get it in America and it's called the Artisan 1430. And I'm just gonna press this image for you now and I'm gonna show you how this would turn out on a T-shirt. But your main criteria of buying a printer or even using your, your own one is if you're gonna be buying a new printer, make sure that you can fit a CISS system, which is a bulk ink system, onto that printer and if possible, uh, a printer which is able to accept you fitting a, an external waste tank to it. Now there are some new Epson printers out there which have got bulk ink system fitted to them. If possible, go for one of them. Now I use the cheapest inks. My CISS system for my Epson 1500 is literally just a generic CISS system which I found on eBay. There's many, many of them out there. There's not a right one. All of them are sort of unbranded unless you go for the Epson printer, which actually has its own built-in Epson specified bulk ink system with it. Now, as far as the waste tank's concerned, whether you're aware or not, that most printers or nearly all printers go through maintenance cycles. And when they go through maintenance cycles, they purge the ink lines and that ink has to go somewhere. And normally it goes in the bottom of your printer onto some ink pads. Now, over a period of uh, time, those ink pads become saturated and filled up in the bottom of your printer, and your printer may go into a, a cycle of flashing its lights intermittently, and once you've read the code on it or whatever, you might find that it says that the printer is beyond its serviceable life. Now, what that basically means is, in a lot of cases, is that your printer pads have been saturated, and as a result of that, it's either time to change the pads in the printer, or you have to throw the printer away and buy a new one. Most people end up doing that because to get to these pads, it means a complete strip down of a printer, and as a printer is a pretty reasonable uh, cheap items nowadays, it would be uncost effective to strip a printer down to change the ink pad. So a lot of people, then you'd need the software to be uh, reset as well. So when you're considering buying a printer for your uh, t-shirt printing business, it's probably wise to be able to fit an external waste tank on it and also a CISS system so that you can use a generic ink, which is all I use. I use a very cheap generic ink, which I get off of eBay. My CISS system was a cheap generic set that I also got off of eBay. And my waste tank, which I fitted to my Epson 1500, I also got off eBay. All I'm saying to you there is, is that if you're looking for a new printer, a lot of these workforce type printers, which have got a, a multi-scanner, uh, or they can, they're wireless and stuff like that. When you're thinking of buying a printer for maybe 80 to 120, 130 pounds or whatever, just go to eBay first, type in an Epsom and whatever your printer model number is, and then type in CISS and then press search. And you'll soon find out whether they make a CISS system for that printer and do the same with, uh, put the Epsom and your model number of your printer or Epsom Workforce, for example, and then put next to that waste tank, or just tank, and press search, and see if they make a waste tank for it. So the chances are, if they make a waste tank for it, and if they make a CISS system for it, and the printer's nice and cheap, then you're in business, then uh, obviously you're gonna be able to avoid having a printer in maybe six months or a year's time, or two years time, that will say that it's, it will still probably come up with the stuff say that it's end of its serviceable life, because I've had it with my Epson 1500 printer on two occasions now, where I've had the, the intermittent flashing lights come up saying that it's end of a serviceable life, but I know that the ink pads are not saturated because I've got a waste ink tank. So all it is, is the software within the printer with a timer, and all that tells the printer is after so many hours of use or whatever, then it says, right, them pads possibly could be full now, even though mine wasn't, 
and then all I had to do was to go online and you can reset the counter in your printer. Uh, you'd have to do your own investigation on, on Google to find out reset and uh, whatever maker printer you've got. And then you can reset the printer. Sometimes it's a paid subscription. You have to buy a code or something like that or download a piece of software. But then you can reset your printer in the knowledge of knowing that you can still carry on using it. And I've done it twice now to my uh, 1500W printer. Anyway, there's enough of that. So the three things that you would need is a printer. You don't need photo quality. You really want a CISS system with that and also a waste ink tank. And you've just been told out to search for that on, on eBay to see if they make one. You need a decent heat press. Look for a second hand one if you can't afford a new one. I've just had a little look on eBay at the moment. There's one there for 500 pounds. It's a very good uh, heat press, a Styles Hotronics Max. Uh, someone's selling one second hand at the moment. You don't. I'm going to show you at this point of the game, you don't need a cutter. I would advise you to get a cutter, uh, like I've got the Cameo Silhouette. I started off with a Craft Robo, and I had that for nine years, which was an A4 cutter. I've since moved up to an A3 cutter. I don't use A3 size transfer papers, although you can get them. We basically wanted that extra width for when we done vinyl. So if you're using, or, or you want to use vinyls as well, for the sake of a 230 pound cutter, which is the Cameo Silhouette, or even get a second hand one of them you can be in business and you can open up a whole repertoire of new vinyls and stuff like that which you can add to your t-shirts as well. But let's start right at the beginning. Heat press, a normal domestic printer and also using the right transfer paper. Here's our transfer paper and I've kept the design simple so if, you're, if you haven't got a cutter keep your design simple. The beauty with this transfer paper is that you can actually either cut round your image depending on what image you've got with a pair of scissors and providing you're going as near as you can to the edge of your drawing, in this case I've just done a basic rectangle, you're not going to see the white transfer paper. So in other words, what I'm saying to you is I wouldn't leave a big white border around like that because you can uh, have a bit of residue there. You don't normally see it, but I'm just saying with different makes of transfer papers, they're more prominent. With this transfer paper, you, you see very, very little. But even so, all I would do would be just to cut as near as I want to the image, as you can see there, I'm just going to do it with a blade, I could do it with scissors. Put that over there, and I'll even trim these edges down as well. Right, so there's our very colourful image, as you can see there. And we're going to have a go at just pressing this on, the, on that same t-shirt. So let's get it ready. Now let's try and find, we'll put this underneath there, on the bottom of that t-shirt there. So I've given this a pre-press already, but um, just for the camera, I'm just going to do it a bit more just to get the moisture out. So I'm just gonna hold it there and keep it down as you know what I normally do for about 10 seconds, just to remove all the moisture because moisture will affect the way your transfers stick. So you can see the steam, I don't know if you can see that, there's steam coming out of the garment now. As I say, it's not long been out of the washing machine, so um, I'll just give it a bit longer. And underneath there, it's nice and dry now. So right, okay, so what we're gonna do, our transfer paper, I'm just gonna lay down on the back of the garment and I'm just gonna cover that with a Teflon sheet, push it back in, and it's got a firm pressure, and we're gonna just click the uh, press down, it's for 30 seconds, and it's also at 190 degrees C. Now when this pops up, I'm gonna pull the backing off straight away, give it a little bit of a stretch out, and that should be it, and then we'll take a look straight away at the, uh, the transfer. Pull it straight off, get rid of that backing paper. As you can see, there's nothing come out on the back of the backing paper there. While it's on the heat press, I'm just gonna give it a little tug. They all recommend that you do this just to set it. This is basically really for just white t-shirt transfers, by the way. You don't really do this with dark t-shirt transfers. Right, okay, so let's pull this to one side and lay this down. There we go, and let's bring you over, and let's just take a look at that. Well, there we go. Hope you can see how vivid that is. We've got our reflection in the water there. We've got our blue sky, or not broken or anything, and all the different colors there have been perfectly reproduced. This doesn't need to be photographic quality, as you can see. You're not gonna want any better than that. And as I said to you, the little stiff feel that you get with this when you first print them, as you can see there, totally disappears afterwards once they've been washed and they get better when washing as well. So get the right transfer papers. I'll reveal the transfer papers that I use in my training DVD. Get yourself a decent heat press 
and at first have a go with your own inkjet printer. You could do it with your own, provided I use an Epson printer as I said to you, I don't really know about the others, the Canons and stuff like that, but uh, obviously if it's an inkjet printer, you can print on these transfer papers that I use, and you should get the same results if you're using the same equipment as me. You don't necessarily need exactly the same heat press, there's many a quality one out there, Stoles are a very good heat press, and also the Stoles, uh, if you can't afford a Hotronics, the Stoles uh, Max is a very good one as well, at a very good price. So just keep your eyes open, look for good used second-hand units, and for God's sake, don't buy one of these multi-presses that do everything. In other words, that do mug pressing, just by changing a plan turn at the bottom, and you can press mug stuff, and then you can do other various. They're no good, they never have been, and if you wanna look for a decent press, just go into Google again and type in the name of the press you're looking at and the word review after it and do some research because this is your key piece of equipment. Get the right transfer papers. If you want to know what I use, check out my training DVD. I'll leave a link in the description below where I also give full email support where you can contact me directly. And you can experiment, as I say, with your own home printer. Uh, we use A4 transfer papers and they will go straight into your printer, no problem. The settings I used, I normally use Best Photo, and for the paper, I use Photo Quality Inkjet. Those are the settings which I set up in my printer. You can get away with using, depending on your printer, but we're using the text and image setting as well. And, uh, you know, you, you may or may not have to try just between the photo quality and the text and image, just to get the right density of colour, let's say, for example. Anyway, hope this was helpful for you beginners. If you're thinking about starting in the T-shirt printing business, you can have a lot of fun doing this, and you can also generate an income after a while. So treat it as a hobby at the beginning, and don't put any pressure on yourself until you've got going, but give yourself a big heads up by getting a correct heat press, use the same transfer papers that I use, get my training DVD, because you'll, you'll have me helping you along the way, and use a basic inkjet printer, and I use the cheapest inks possible with a CISS system. The reason why I do that is because it can be very expensive to print t-shirts with just the little cartridges that are inside your printer, and it's best to have a separate bulk ink system. I've got six different colors in my Epson printer, six different colors. I buy 100 milliliter or 125 milliliter bottles in the whole six colors, and they cost me about 10 pounds. Just having the right knowledge. See you later, bye for now.